Hey, 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 this is Seagrove, and today I wanted to talk about player tiers. This is my second video of this series where I'm just talking about whatever I talk, want to talk about. I'm changing the name to C Speaks because it's a little bit uh, more indicative of what's going on. I'm not always going to be on a soapbox about something, although I will probably have two or three more of those at some point, I'm sure. But so this is my second episode of C Speaks, and I wanted to talk about player tiers. I originally reached out to Andrew Wambolt because of his ranking system that he has on the CharizardLounge.com, which is super, super cool and very interesting to me. But uh, he quickly realized uh, that it would be pretty toxic to just say, you know, these players are the best, and then this there's this tier, and then you'll have people like, why am I not in that tier? And maybe they deserve to me, or maybe they don't deserve to be, or whatever. But um, it was going to be divisive at best, so decided not to go that route with it. But I am going to be just talking about how I think about tiers, and as a result, it's going to be much less formal and mathematical and formulaic, and it's going to use a less consistent method, um, use less consistent methodology for deciding the tiers. It's just sort of how I think about it personally. Um, so this is it. Uh, my first tier of players are those in serious contention for the title greatest of all time. Um, this is the GOAT tier, tier one. And this is um, people who are not only at the top of the game on a certain season, but are at the top of the game on multiple seasons. Uh, tier two, in my mind, is those players who are at that level, but have not been for an extended period of time. So they're mostly players who started in the last five years and are amazing, amazing players. And if they keep playing, they could move up to the top level because they're at that skill level, but they don't have the longevity or the volume of work that the other people have put into it or have created, I should say. Uh, tier three would be guys who've taken down multiple regionals and they're contenders for top 16 every season they play in. Um, but they're not maybe someone that I think of or people think of as one of the top five players currently, but they're, they're contenders for top 16 because even one of the top five players currently isn't guaranteed top 16 in a particular season. But so these are guys who are top 16 level. They may not get it every year, but they're always a contender for it. Um, tier four would be people who can get top 16 on a good season but are not going to get there consistently. Tier 5 would be they aren't going to get top 16. Uh, maybe this year they could with like the if you're, if you're very wealthy and they could just go to a lot of regionals and a lot of internationals, maybe then they could get top 16. But normally they wouldn't be top 16 players. Um, but they're players who don't have to worry about getting an invite. An invite is basically guaranteed for them. So, yeah. Then tier six would be people who also don't really have to work too hard to get an invite. Um, but maybe maybe when it was like last year, maybe they'd have to put in some effort um, to get an invite. And then tier seven, in my mind, are people who can get an invite this year for the first year um, by working for it. And this is where I would put myself. Uh, people who are getting 17 to 19 points at regionals, typically. Um, at that, that's the level, that's sort of a, a, a changing uh, method for deciding my tiers because we're getting out of the ranking section as we go down. This is tier seven. Uh, tier eight would be people who aren't normally getting points at regionals, but they'll have a good run from time to time. Um, could possibly even top eight a regional um, on a really good day or top 32 on a good day on a good day uh, top eight would be really rare but could happen i guess but generally it would be uh, people who aren't getting points at regionals but could hit a top 32 could hit a yeah i probably shouldn't have said top eight could hit a top 32 if they get lucky could hit a uh top 64 or top 128 on uh, part of their upper variance is how i see your c tier eight uh, tier nine are people who get top 16s or top 8s at League Cups on a good day um, typically go 3-2 and two or 4-2 and two at a League Cup depending on the 
the amount of people. And then top 10, tier 10 would be people who maybe do well at league challenges um, or are able to top 16 at league cups is like where they're getting their points. Like, oh, I got how many points do you have this season? Whatever. It's primarily from league challenges and doing well at league cups. And um, I actually have other tiers I think about, but I'm going to stop at um, tier 10. I think I have about 15, five more tiers, but um, those are the, the with, I'd say that's where the competitive tiers end. So yeah, if you want to ask me any questions about this, or if you want to feel free to do that, if you want to um, tell me about your own tiering system, how you think about it, because my tiering system is pretty tight, like at the top. You know, tier one is only a, a handful of players, and tier two is not much more than that. And it isn't until um, really tier four or tier five when you'd get a number of players of 100. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you're interested in doing that. Um, I really like ranking systems, so this is my tier list. Thanks for watching. And if you... Uh, are looking for cards you can get them at flipsidegaming.com for 10 percent off if you use my username uh, all caps seagrove uh, you get 10 percent off your cards there and it's better than tcg player which is where i used to buy my cards so check it out